as we uh, near the end of another week, I would have to say that this is probably, uh, uh, this week has probably been the busiest week I've seen as far as committee activity this session. A lot of that has to do with the approaching deadline of the procedural halfway point of the session, otherwise known as uh, turnaround. And of course, that's where bills uh, uh, from one house of origin go to the other. So we've seen a lot of bills coming out of committee, not that many on the House floor of significance just yet, but uh, that'll change next week uh, with uh, turnaround uh, starting on February 22nd. So we will see uh, probably a lot of bills uh, on the floor and I'll report on those, uh, those bills of significance uh, in my next report. Uh, one of the big pieces of news at the Capitol this week was the uh, swearing in of our new Lieutenant Governor, uh, uh, Tracy Mann of Salina, a businessman from Salina, was sworn in as the Lieutenant Governor uh, earlier this week. Many of you probably uh, would remember him. He was a candidate uh, in the primary for First District Congressman uh, some years back. Haven't heard much about him. I think he's been involved in business in Salina uh, since that time. Uh, have not met him. I uh, was busy uh, with committee meetings and didn't get to go to the swearing-in ceremony. Uh, I understand it was a pretty small uh, ceremony in a smaller room, probably mainly with uh, friends and family. Also of uh, note was a informational hearing uh, here in the Capitol uh, a couple days ago. This is in regard to the federal tax bill and its effect on the state of Kansas. Now, earlier we noted a lot of people uh, file their in, uh, individual income taxes, pre-file them, and so we had a huge increase over last year as far as individual income tax filings because there's no uh, tax advantage waiting to 2018, so people wanted to take advantage of 2017. Likewise, uh, your uh, corporate filings was down because they waited till, are going to wait till 2018 filing. Uh, to take advantage of the federal uh, tax break that they're going to get uh, when they file at that time. Now, the report indicated that Kansas would probably see an, in, an increase of about $138 million uh, when the fiscal year starts July 1st and probably $180 million in the following year of, uh, of additional money. And that comes about because of the change in the federal income tax filing. Now, I went and talked to uh, the research department uh, and talked to the, uh, the tax people there. They're still trying to sort this out, so before I say anything uh, that I might have to retract, we're going to wait and uh, get a full report on that, and I'll probably have that for you next week. But uh, the, the fact of the matter is, it's put things in a position where uh, we're not sure where our money is going to be, and it's making it very difficult in the Appropriations Committee to realize what kind of a uh, budget we're going to put together and also the tax committee is also looking at it very closely and I figure that uh, we'll get a clearer picture as things move on especially as we get towards the end of the session. Uh, Medicaid expansion still uh, you know big in discussions here. Uh, hearings were held in the Senate uh, just a couple days ago. Huge turnout for that because there is a huge amount of support. Uh, as you know last year in the House we passed Medicaid expansion with a vote of 81 and I think the Senate had about uh, 22 or 3, not enough to override the governor's veto, which uh, would have probably happened. Now we're in a situation where uh, the new governor is the author of uh, the CanCare uh, 1.0, and so he's not really interested in Medicaid expansion. In fact, it was brought up to him at one of the gatherings, and he said, I'm not even going to discuss that. That's very discouraging because I think this would be very helpful, especially when we talk about the amount of money that our state has passed up on federal dollars, which is well over $2.5 billion, which could have really helped us out in our budget situation. So we will see uh, if the House is going to take that up. Obviously, anything that would happen in the House or Senate would have to be uh, veto-proof votes, and we'd have to have uh, 84 votes in the House and 27 in the Senate. Uh, once again, the in-state tuition bill has uh, surfaced. Uh, this was a bill that uh, came about in 2004, which uh, gave uh, uh, undocumented immigrant children that had grown up in Kansas and met many of the requirements as far as attending our, uh, our education system here in the state of Kansas. Uh, they were uh, permitted to enroll in our state universities at the in-state tuition level instead of international tuition. And it's been working real well. We have quite a few students have uh, participated in that and somehow that uh, has come about. We had a hearing on that, partial hearing on that today, 
in the higher education budget. Uh, many uh, opposition to repealing this bill. Everybody wants to keep it in place. It's working. That's your uh, update for this week, and we'll be back uh, next week, probably talk about a lot of the legislation that passes uh, as we approach turnaround.